Howdy everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. So I got a really fun pattern for you today. Now I found this one from Federation of Fly Fishers, Fly Pattern Encyclopedia. It's been on my to-do list for a month or so now. The pattern is called the Bridge 99 Emerger. Now it was in the caddis nymph section, so it's a, obviously a caddis emerger. And when you look at it, you'll tell it has the, the wing profile of an elk hair caddis. Now the pattern was tied in this book by a guy named Gene Stutzman from Lebanon, Oregon. Now I couldn't tell if Gene created the pattern or if he just tied it for this book, but I did a little bit of research and I learned that the Bridge 99 they're talking about is on the Metolius River in Oregon. There's a 12 mile section upstream of the bridge that's fly fishing only. And since Gene was an Oregon fly fisherman and tire, I put two and two together and figured out that's probably what this fly is named after. So I have no idea when it was created or really who created it if it wasn't Gene Stutzman. But I think this is really a great looking pattern. Now it is tied on a pretty unique hook. It's a TMC 200R, which is basically a 3X long curve shank nymph or dry fly hook. So the fly has a great looking profile, uses a couple of cool materials, deer hair for the wing. I always love that, but it's also got some black squirrel for an underwing, which is pretty unique and does make the fly look kind of cool. Now I've never fished this pattern, but I promise you, I'm gonna tie a dozen of these, put them in my box for this spring. I think it's gonna be a winner. So there's one in the vise, a Bridge 99 Emerger. I think this is a pretty cool looking pattern and it can be tied pretty big. The recipe calls it for as big as an eight and down to a 20. So let me pinch this barb real quick and then tell you about this hook. It does call for a TMC 200R which if you're not familiar with that, that's basically a 3X long nymph or dry fly hook. And they do make these as big as a four and I think down to a size 20. So let's get that in there and I wanna use brown thread. This is a 70 denier. I'll lay a base down to where the start of the bend would be, I guess, right above the point of the hook. And we are gonna put a rib on this UTC wire, copper, and a size small. So let's get this caught in right up here. And then take it back to where we wanna start this body. Now the recipe just says a cream dubbing. And this is a nymph, it's, a, it's an emerger, so it's not a dry fly. And I'm gonna use something that will hold water. So something natural, and I'm gonna go with a, a rabbit. A wool would be fine, but I would probably avoid any type of synthetic. I wouldn't use a super fine or any uh, man-made dubbing. So go ahead and put a noodle on, maybe three plus inches, because it's a pretty long body. We're gonna take it up there to just a little bit behind the, the eye and get a taper if you can, but if not, don't worry about it. Okay, I think that's gonna be fine right there. Got a little bit of loose on me there at the front, but we can take care of that with this rib. I'm gonna put these on here fairly tight, but not real close together. So five or six wraps to get me up front is gonna be fine. When you get it up front, couple wraps to catch this off. And what I'll do, I'll pull the wire forward, take a few wraps going forward, so that when I lift it up to spin it off, I don't risk it unraveling on me. So let's take our thread right back here to where we're gonna catch in the first part of this wing, which is a black squirrel tail. This is a tail from an actual black squirrel. If you don't have this, I think a regular squirrel is just gonna be fine. But definitely put this in your stacker. Give it a few good whacks and see how that's stacked. I think that's going to be just fine. And this part is pretty long, a little bit past the bend of the hook right there. And I forgot to wax this thread, so let me grab that at the length I want and put just a little bit of wax on here because this squirrel, it's slippery. And I am going to do this trick I sometimes do with bucktail, is put one wrap just around the hair, not tight, and then this first pinch wrap, still not really tight, but maybe a medium one, 
Now the third one I can get a little bit tighter. So if I'm lucky right there, that wing is going to be coming off the, the top of the fly. And it is. So maybe another wrap or two to lock that right there before we snip it off in the front. And I'm just going to cut this as close as I can, maybe at a little bit of an angle right there. That's a little bit fuzzy, but we're going to be fine. Loose wraps right back up here to the eye. And I'm going to have to fill in this little bump with that between that squirrel where it stepped down to the to the hook. So I'm going to have to spend a few wraps right here just trying to smooth that out. It's not going to be perfect, but we're going to be fine. So let's get our thread back to the back of our head and a little bit of wax on it right here. For the next component, deer hair. Just deer body hair, and I'm using a coastal deer, and this is dyed. So take a, a medium-sized clump, maybe about what we did for that tail, maybe that right there. Um, brush out the under fur before you put it in your stacker, and give it a good stack. And how you can tell if it's stacked, just look at those ends. Those are all jagged and uneven, so I think this stacked pretty well. But let's take a look and see. It looks like it did, but I got a couple of crazy ones right there. I even got one in there upside down. How did I do that? I don't know. All right, I'm just going to try to pull those that are in here upside down out. Okay, that worked. And we still got enough. So this is not as long as the, the black under wing. And it might be getting close to the length of the hook, maybe just a little bit shy of it. So I've got my thread wax. I'm gonna put this on right here. And I'm not gonna do that trick where I put one wrap just around it. Because if this spins around on me, I don't really mind. But I'm gonna do a loose wrap, another loose wrap, and then tighten it up. And now maybe a tight wrap, let it flare up on the front. That's fine, because we're gonna cut that in a second to give it a nice little old buzz cut. So I'm pulling these pretty tight, about as tight as I am comfortable without breaking my thread. But next, I'm just gonna pull about a third of these up, put a wrap right down in the middle of it, pull the next third or so up, take another wrap right down it, and then pull them all up, and then prop it up, just build my head right under here. I'm not going to trim these off yet, and that is because I'm going to put my wet finish next, and if I have them long, it makes it a little bit easier to wet finish. You just pull them back. Now you can get a four or five turn in there pretty easily. All right, now the next step should be pretty easy because these hairs are so much longer than that wing. We should be able to just grab them all without grabbing any of that wing Maybe give it a little bit of a twist, kind of get them tight together. And don't cut this off too short. It's part of the flies having a little bit of a significant head right there. So that's about the length of the head I want. I got one of them that didn't cut, so we'll take care of that. Prop that up and take a look at it. There we go. I'm going to put a drop of head cement just right underneath, let it wick in those thread right there. I'm not going to worry about it on top. But that's it. Fish's view right there. You see those wings coming off the side? You see that head? Pretty simple pattern to tie, but man, I think this is going to be an effective fly. So that's it, everybody. I appreciate y'all watching. Take care, and we'll see you next time.